The High Court takes a look at free speech and television indecency. Jeffrey Brown is in charge of that story. Cher, Nicole Richie, Saving Private Ryan, and the PBS documentary The Blues. What do they all have in common? Well, they've been on broadcast television where they've used or included profanity, and they're all now part of a constitutional debate over federal regulation of indecency in a case argued before the Supreme Court today. Marsha Coyle of the National Law Journal was there and is back with us tonight. Welcome back. Thanks, Jeff. All right, so this is one, as opposed to some we talk about, this is one everybody sort of understands quickly. Absolutely. What can be on television? What's indecency? in the eyes of the FCC. All right. The Federal Communications Commission defines indecency as material that describes or depicts sexual or excretory organs or activities in a patently offensive manner as judged by contemporary community standards. Sounds so easy. It does. In fact, <laughs> the FCC brought the case to the Supreme Court today because a lower federal appellate court found that the definition was so vague that it violated the due process and First Amendment rights of broadcast medium. All right. So so bring us then what are the facts of this case? All right. Uh, I mentioned some of these people. You Cher, did. Nicole Ritchie. Yes. yes. And, and they are in this case. <laughs> Uh, or the, the the stations are in this right, case. Right. Uh, the lower federal appellate court was ruling on challenges brought by Fox Television and ABC. Fox was found to violate the indecency policy because it aired in 2002 and 2003 the Billboard Music Awards. Uh, at, in the 2002 show, Cher used the F word. In the 2003 show, Nicole Richie used the F and the S word. Uh, <laughs> ABC was a challenge here because it, it found that uh, the FCC found that it violated the policy because of a 2003 episode of NYPD Blue, in which uh, a nude woman was shown from the rear entering a shower. Okay, so those, that brings us up, and then a lower court says these are vague. What happened in court today? You had so, a lively time today. It, it was court. a lively argument. Yeah. And the issue before the court is, is exactly what came out of the lower federal appellate court, and that is, is this policy unconstitutionally vague? Justice Ginsburg went right at it by saying to Solicitor General of the United States, Donald Verrilli. Who's who, arguing in, in, on behalf of the FCC. Right, he's defending case. the policy. Yeah. She said that the major objection here seems to be that one can't tell what is indecent and what is not. She said vulgar words in showing the movie Saver, uh, Saving Private Ryan is okay, but vulgar words used by blues mu musicians in a PBS documentary is not. Uh, nudity shown in the movie uh, Schindler's List is okay, but it's not okay in the NYPD uh, episode. So. Mr. Verrilli, he made basically two arguments here. He said, well, one, the policy is not vague because, he said, it is context-driven. And when the FCC is looking at each instance in terms of its overall context, you're never going to have perfect clarity. And his second key argument was that the broadcast medium, and, and we're not talking about cable, yeah, Jim. We should, be, we should we make should, this we clear. We should make it very clear. Right. We're talking about or, just over the air public broadcast. air, right, mm -hmm. uh, and not uh, satellite TV mm -hmm. either. He said the uh, broadcast medium has benefited for years from free and exclusive use of the public airwaves. And in return for that, he said, the gov the, the, in return for a government license to mm -hmm. do that, they have an enforceable obligation to create a safe haven for parents who do not want their children to be exposed to vulgar language or nudity. All right, and then the argument for the, of the broadcasters. The broadcasters, of course, uh, feel that this policy is vague for the very mm -hmm. examples Justice Ginsburg gave, and it's inconsistent, they said. But they're arguing for something a little more here. They're saying that the indecency policy is hopelessly out of date. Uh, they point to the fact that Broadcast medium is no longer, as the Supreme Court found in 1978, in the case involving George Carlin's filthy words, mm -hmm. that the broadcast medium could be uh, regulated for indecency because it was so pervasive for mm -hmm. all Americans and so uniquely accessible to children. So the broadcast medium here is telling the court, this is out of date, there's cable, there's satellite. 
The Chief Justice... Explosion of media everywhere, Absolutely. which is why we have to limit this and make clear it's just about broadcast. Right. Yeah. Chief Justice Roberts said, though, that in a way that cuts against the broadcasters, broadcast medium's arguments because if this is so pervasive, there's so much more now, then maybe we need a few channels that provide a safe haven. Uh, the, the justices also went into questions about V-chip technology. Uh, Justice Kennedy said, well, you know, what about V-chip? Isn't that sufficient? Which allows parents to... To monitor or yeah. to block. Right. And uh, Mr. Verrilli for the FCC said it's really inadequate technology. Uh, it won't help you on live television. Uh, uh, also, uh, Justice Kennedy raised the... the the question of whether, you know, there's a symbolic value to American society to have a, a segment of television that isn't vulgar. And Justice Scalia, who showed, I think, his hand almost immediately, uh, said, sign me up for Justice Kennedy's symbolism. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's interesting. It sounds as though justices watch television, right? They do. These black, uh, black uh, robed, shrouded in those black robes, but they go home and actually watch right. television. They knew what they were talking about. Justice Ginsburg said, for example, that the language used, uh, that children today would not be shocked by the language used today as children a generation ago would be. And, and briefly, uh, I understand that Justice Sotomayor took herself out of the case, recused herself. Yes, she did. So there is the possibility, that's because she was involved in the lower she, case? Right, she sat on the lower federal appellate court when uh -huh. this case was moving through that court. But that means there's the potential for a tie. There always is when there are eight, only eight justices. And I, I have to say that it did seem as though there, there could be a split decision here. All right, Marsha Coyle, as always, thanks so much. My pleasure.